Good afternoon. Today I'm going to tell you about some new ways to consider the solar radiation entering of, into our buildings through our windows in order to get a better building design. The main objective of this uh, research is to encourage passive architecture uh, design considering the amount of daylight illuminances together with solar heat gains through the climate-based uh, thermal and daylight modeling. The purposes of this research are the incorporation of daylighting into the habitual process of architecture, architecture, the integration of the thermal and luminous components of daylighting, and a creation of a, of a decision-making tool in order to give some recommendations to the architects. The first thing that we have to bear in mind is the solar radiation is almost 50% visible radiation, but almost 50% thermal radiation. Actually, both aspects are separately studied by thermal experts and dilated, dilated experts. So uh, as they present the results in different ways, we have to think or we, want, we ask to, uh, want to ask is uh, how we can integrate them. In daylighting, we have several uh, metrics that considers the sun and the sky. For example, the delay factor considers only the, the sky without the sun. The sun lighting considers the sun without the, uh, without the sky, but the sun without the intensity of, of the radiation. And both, uh, even both provide the only uh, performance. One is for the whole uh, work plane and, all, and the other is for just one, uh, for one sensor point. If we move to, to see what is the performance of the sun in the whole world plane, we, move, have, we have to move to the shadow pattern. But the most realistic, just for one moment in time, is the instantaneous calcul uh, daylight calculation. But it's just for one moment in time, even when it, it provides us uh, the whole steam performance. It's just by moving to the climate basic daylight modeling when we have uh, an instantaneous calculation considering the sun and the sky based on the real climate data that we get illuminances for all the sensor points on, on the work plane. What we get uh, using the climate basic daily modeling is an annual, pro uh, annual illuminance profile that it is treated in order to get the, the, the climate, climate basic delay metrics. The annual uh, illuminance profiles can give us the temporal performance, as we can see in the graph, of one sensor point for each uh, row of, uh, of the file. So the file contains all the information for all the sensor points in our work plane. The parameters involved in getting the climate basic di uh, daylight metrics are the illuminance, the space, and the time. If we look through the luminance, uh, the luminance through the space, what we have is a temporal perception of the, uh, of the performance, and it expresses as a temporal max, for example, giving information about the percentage of the space. If we look to, uh, for the luminance through, this, uh, through the time, what we have is a special perception, given commonly as a false color maps, giving information about the percentage of the, of the time. So basically, what a cl uh, climate basic, uh, climate basic delay metric does is a statistical analysis for each sensor point based on a, a certain temporal range and uh, uh, giving some lighting levels. That's how what we get, the daylight autonomy and its complementary light independency which it accounts to the 100 of the percentage of range divided uh, in, in, in two, in, with just with one, one threshold. By giving the useful daylight illuminances, what we have is, uh, is a temporal division of the illuminances through the time in different illuminant ranges. The sum of all these illuminant ranges for each sensor point is 100 of the percentage uh, of the time range considered. So basically, what we have to bear in mind is when we see a false color map of a climate basic delay metric, is that we are not seeing illuminances. We are seeing a valley which represents a group of illuminances. So 
as they treat each point separately, we cannot know if a luminance is uh, meet simultaneously with another point in the, in the work plane. What I propose is to move to an early work plane analysis. I mean, it's taking the annual uh, illuminance profile and making an analysis for each hour in order to know the simultaneous performance of the work plane, as we can see in the graph. The other question is that, yes, uh, the climate basic, the lane matrix, usually look for a certain uh, temporal range. But if we look for a more sustainable building, we have to look for the whole diurnal, uh, diurnal illuminances. I mean, it's order to, uh, in order to get the daylight potential of our building as it, it may change its use during the time. So in my research, I've taken a simple box model, placed it in Seville, south-oriented, with a window-to-wall to ratio of 10% without the urban environment. And this model has been simulated with DASIM and Design Builder in order to get the annual profile, uh, annual illuminance profile and the annual, annual solar, solar heat gains profile. So what I get is, for example, those graphics. In those graphics, what I show is the percentage of the work plane with this, which is within each illuminant range. So, for example, we can see how part of the uh, work plane is, uh, has an illuminance higher than 3,000 lux, which will represent a certain probability of glare. So we are seeing when the, uh, this is, uh, it is happening, this performance. The advantage of this is that we can meet or we can compare these results with uh, the solar heat gains at, as they are usually expressed as a temporal graph. So transforming the temporal line to a temporal maps, we can compare with the, uh, the other graphs, the other temporal maps. The question is that solar heat gains needs an, a criterion in order to know if we are getting too much heat in our, in our building. So, it is proposed a value of 150 watts per square meter that represents a value for which blinds are proposed to close in a building without air conditioning. By the other side, in daylight, we have the daylight sufficiency criterion, which means that we have to meet at least 300 lux in at least 50% of the work plane and at last during the 50% of the time. If we want to know the diffuse contribution of this, uh, this uh, to the daylighting, we are using the daylight factor concept in order to get the, the climate basic daylight factor just uh, by getting the diffuse horizontal illuminance, the external diffuse horizontal illuminance for each year, during the year, or for each month in order to get the uh, delay factor threshold which represents uh, this uh, criterion. But if we want to know the global uh, contribution, we can take the early, the early work plane analysis and for each hour ask how many sensor points meet 300 lux. With this information, we def I define those two points. The first one is the maintained delay of efficiency, which represents uh, what is the uh, how many delay how, how many delay hours the work plane meets a 30% coverage of 300 luxes, and the global the global delay efficiency, which represents how many what is the coverage of the work plane for the 50% of the uh, temporal, uh, of the annual, of the, the diurnal um, hours. So finally, a special, uh, the spatial daylight sufficiency is the line on the region between those points. Those metrics that I, that I have presented you can be performed, can be shown in a monthly analysis so we can show at the same time can, can see at the same time the daylighting and the insulation performance of this, uh, this space. 
we can also correlate the uh, probability of glare with the probability of overheating by correlating the percentage of the plane with, uh, with an illuminance higher than 3,000 logs with an excessive solar heat gains. So, for example, taking those uh, European locations, we can see how uh, the higher daylight av availability in the north of Europe is just mostly during the summer, as well as the higher insulation. But as far as we move to the south, it, the insulation is higher on the winter. So we cannot make the same dilated strategies or the same corrections depending on the location that we are. If we look for this variation through the annual basis, we can see the performance of this uh, parameters and we can see how it is the increase of every, of every metric, the new metrics, and we can see the increase of the solar heat gains uh, through the, the location, but also the increase of the percentage of the space within a, an illuminant in every uh, illuminant branch, but also the decreasing of this part of this, uh, this area, so reducing the presence of lower illuminances. If I do the same with the orientation, we can see how the diffuse contribution is almost constant, which validates these methods as it is uh, correlated with the uh, climate basic delay factor. But we can see also how the performance of the excessive solar heat gains is in concordance with the thermal studies. But also I, have, I want to highlight that if we, want, if we see the percentage of the, plan, of the work plan with an illuminance higher than 3,000 lux correspond with an excessive solar heat gain higher than, than 40%. Looking for the frontal obstruction in our environment, we can see how, for example, if we took a frontal obstruction higher than 45 uh, degrees, we are not meeting the daylight sufficiency criterion and we are getting higher parts of the work plane with low illuminances. So we'll need to uh, introduce artificial systems. But also we, we can see how in the, uh, the first uh, or without the urban environment, we need to control the uh, part of the work plane within uh, illuminance higher than 3,000 logs, introducing some corrections. So what I want to highlight finally is that uh, if we consider the annual Dalai Towers, we are seeing our building in a long-term perspective as we are looking for the daylight potential of our building. And if we, look, if we move to the early work analysis of the work plane, we are seeing the simultaneous performance of the work plane uh, as we are considering all the sensors as, a, as an only group, just not separate them as, an individual in, as individual uh, units. We can also correlate illuminances with solar heat gains, which it's especially, uh, especially important in, Mediter in Mediterranean climates where the sun lighting is, I, you have seen, it's uh, very important, especially during the sun, during the uh, in the, during the whole year and the excessive, the ex excessive solar heat gains during the winter. But also by this temporal performance of the uh, daylighting and insulation, we can adjust the performance of artificial systems like uh, lighting or solar protections in order to get a better and a, a, be a better uh, um, the best uh, or the better efficiency of their performance. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>